We'll switch into a totally different topic this morning. Now, this is something that we have talked about on the show in the past, and that is the mentally ill in prisons. This morning, I'm joined by clinical psychologist Dr. Stephen Ragusia. This is a huge issue. To give you a little background, the number of mentally ill in prisons is six times the population of the Florida Keys. Dr. Ragusia, thank you for being back with me this morning. Thank you for having me. Dr. Ragusia, where is the largest mental health facility in our country? Um, actually, it's in the county of Los Angeles, and it's the Los Angeles County Prison. Um, it holds um, over 2,500 mentally ill people in one location, and that is now the largest mental health facility in the United States. Dr. Ragusia, this is an issue that you have, you've followed it very closely the past couple of years that you've been in your practice. Can you tell us how many prisons and jails you yourself have been into? Oh, dozens. Um, I've been to county jails, um, uh, state prisons, and federal penitentiaries of all different kinds and qualities. Um, uh, I mean, I've been, to, I've been to one jail that was sort of like Mayberry, um, where it was this little country town and there was a guy there who was being held for murder and uh, he was walking around outside the cell and um, Aunt B, or somebody just like Aunt B, came in with grilled cheese sandwiches and tomato soup and brought us lunch and stuff and, um, uh, you know, it was a very homey kind of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I've been to um, state penitentiaries w that were more like medieval dungeons. Um, places that literally had um, algae and moss growing on the walls and, and, and sometimes water would drip down those walls. Um, very dark and dank. And then I've been to super modern federal penitentiaries um, where um, you could walk for maybe five or ten minutes through the facility and never see another human being. Wow. Um, they were uh, sort of sterilely clean um, and uh, uh, concrete and um, uh, very inhuman facilities. Mm -hmm. um, and that I've been to some federal facilities that were considered country club places, and uh, they were a lot like staying at a decent resort. Mm -hmm. They were much nicer than the, than much the ones nicer, you Much nicer, that's right. So I, I've been to a wide range of jails and prisons. What have you found about the mentally ill who are behind those doors? <laughs> and, and first of all, let me say this. The first thing I found is, is that is in, uh, our, our tax dollars are being wasted in a grotesque way. Okay, it's, it's very expensive to take care of a mentally ill prisoner. It costs less than half of that amount to take care of them in a hospital and to do a much better job of it. Mm -hmm. So first thing I found is, is that I and everybody should simply be angry at the fact that our tax dollars are being wasted in this way. Okay, everybody's got an interest in this. Um, over the years, what has happened is that more and more the prisons of the United States have been used as mental health facilities. And, um, uh, and the reason for that is because it's a whole lot easier to get money to buy a new prison than it is to get money to buy a mental hospital or to build a community mental health center or to fund treatment in that mental health center. Um, and uh, it's just stupid public policy. Let me tell you about one experience I had walking into a prison. Um, this was in um, a state penitentiary um, in, um, in Pennsylvania. And uh, I was asked to evaluate a prisoner there. Um, I, you go through this. First of all, you, you go through the iron doors. And you, know, you walk in and you suddenly realize that you're not free anymore. Even though you're just a visitor, unless somebody lets you out, you're stuck in there. And you go through iron door after iron door after iron door until you finally get to whatever unit it is that you have to look at the prisoner at. And um, in this particular instance, this man um, was 
in what I can describe as uh, a zoo cage. Um, it was behind bars, it was circular, and um, there was the, a guard station right next to it. Um, uh, this was a unit where they kept a lot of the mentally ill prisoners. And in this little cage, they usually kept the worst ones. Mm -hmm. And um, this guy was standing in about a foot and a half of toilet paper, paper napkins, and other fragments of paper, newspaper, things like that, that were all torn up and scattered across the floor about 18 inches high. Um, he was stark naked, and he was eating his lunch out of his toilet bowl. Frightening, Dr. Ragusea, to see that. And when I talked with him, he, um, he talked with me about being a representative of Landru, who was a character on Star Trek, by the way, many years ago. Mm -hmm. And... Um, how he was this emissary from this other world and Landru, the superior being on this planet that Captain Kirk had stepped on. Um, and that's who he believed he was mm -hmm. and what he was doing was simply there representing Landru. And, and this man was clearly suffering, mm -hmm. clearly being treated in an in inhumane way. None of the guards knew what to do about this guy. Mm -hmm. um, and he was severely mentally ill. Mm -hmm. Now, why is a man like that in jail? Right. Why isn't he receiving treatment in a mental health facility? That's right. And the answer is because it is now easier and cheaper for us to put him in jail than it is to get him treatment in a mental health facility. It's one of the great public policy blunders of the last 25 years, mm -hmm. and it just has gotten worse. Mm -hmm. And there is something, Dr. Ragusea, you said last time on the show, there is something we can do right now to help try and put a stop to that, and that's to reach out to our, our legislators. That's right. You write your congressman, write your senator, write on the state and, and, and uh, I'm sorry, on the state and national level. Um, write to President Obama, write mm -hmm. to every single rep person who represents you and tell them you want this to stop. Mm -hmm. Because unless we do that, it just is going to keep going on. Mm -hmm. If they act soft on crime, they're afraid they won't get reelected. Mm -hmm. But you have to be smart as well as tough. Mm -hmm. And um, this is an enormous waste of public dollars. Absolutely. Dr. Ragusea, thank you very much for being back on the show with me this morning and for letting our viewers know about your experience in the prisons and jails across our country. That's going to do it for me this morning. I thank you for tuning in. I will be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. and then again at 8.30 a.m. And don't forget to watch WEYW on Sunday for the powerboat races. Race times are at 10, 12.30 p.m. and 2 p.m. Take care, everyone. Goodbye. Walk up.